Welcome into Warchant One on One. This is Ira Schofeld, managing editor of Warchant.com. And I'm joined today by a guy who now goes by the recording name A1 Doc, but you guys probably remember him from his time at Florida State in uh, the late 2000s, early 2010s, uh, is Everett Dawkins, a standout defensive lineman who started like 41 games for the Seminoles before going on to play professional football. As I said, he's now got a music career. So we're going to talk about that a little bit later. I'm really interested in that. I've listened to a couple of the songs and, and, uh, even though I'm not your demographic, Everett, uh, it's, uh, it's good stuff, man. I really, uh, uh, I don't know, I don't know if you're going after the 50 year old dudes in Tallahassee, but uh, but uh, yeah. no, I, I really enjoy it. So we'll talk about that, and then uh, and uh, figure we can, uh, you know, obviously start off talking a lot about your Florida State time, and uh, and all the things you went through in Tallahassee, because a lot of things you went through when you were a Seminole are things that I think uh, the players in this current team are dealing with right now. So how are you doing, man? Thanks for joining me. Hey, I'm doing good, man. I'm glad you reached out to me. So get together and talk. Uh, very excited about what my seminars are putting together. I, I will say that. Uh, I've been keeping up and watching them. So uh, I'm very excited. And I do feel like they're at a point, like when, when I first came in, you know, uh, it, it's very similar. Of course, they have a lot more than we had, uh, but we have the makeup. We got the coach. We got everything we need. You know what I mean? So uh, it's going to be exciting to see. So what? You know, back when you when you come out of high school, so you were coming out in 2007, I think, 2007, 2008. Yes, sir. And, and uh, you know, one of the top players in the country coming out of Burns High School in South Carolina, which was the, you know, as, as good as it gets. I mean, one of the dominant programs in, in uh, high school football. I think you guys were – I know you guys were nationally ranked. You went 15 to no your senior season. Won a yes, state sir. title. A bunch of D1 guys. You could have gone to a lot of different schools. Florida State was already kind of starting to see the end of Coach Bowden's tenure. Um, things were certainly not going in the best direction, but, but Jimbo had come in and, and they got some kind of enthusiasm going again. What was, what was your recruiting process like and, and how did you end up picking Florida state? Uh, I think a lot of people were worried about the Bowen situation, but the, the good part about it, that was, is that Jimbo was right behind him. You know what I mean? So we knew that Jimbo was going to be the head coach. We didn't know when, but, uh, we knew he was going to be the head coach. So that kind of helped out and, Oh, my, I got my offer at a three-day camp at Florida State. I went down and I just killed it, dominated, didn't get blocked. Uh, and they showed a lot of love, you know, uh, always did. So that was one of the things. And then I just love Tallahassee. Once you get in Tallahassee, you know you're in Tallahassee. Once you get around the stadium, everything just stands out. You know what I mean? It's a great city. I've always loved Tallahassee. I still come back when I can. Uh, and it reminded me a lot of home. So that was one of the great things about Florida State and Tallahassee. It was just a great mix for me. Jimbo was already kind of taking over recruiting at that point. I know Coach Bowden was still the head coach, but Jimbo was kind of putting together the recruiting classes. Um, but did Coach Bowden come do an in-home? Uh, what was yes, what was your sir. interaction with him? I, I, yes. I've heard so many stories through the years about Coach Bowden and what it's like for families to have him come in. What, what was that like for you? Uh, it was pretty cool, man. Bowden came up to my mom's house. Uh, Growing up, I used to eat hamburger helper all the time. So my mom asked me what I want to cook, and I, you know, got hamburger helper. They came in there and ate it like it wasn't, you know what I mean? They tore it up, <laughs> actually. Um, it was him, uh, John Lilly, I believe, maybe. And right. rest in peace, Coach Allen just passed away. So Jody uh, definitely crazy. But, uh, yeah, it was, a, it, was, it was a – I still have the pictures. Uh, him and my grandfather. My grandfather just passed away. I got a picture with him and my grandfather as well. So uh, it's it's uh, it's something that you all will remember for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? Definitely. Well, you know, and I know that, you know, and let, as you said, um, you know, prayers to the Jody Allen's family. That's a really tragic story. I think he's, I'm not sure exactly the age, early 60s, uh, former Florida State defensive ends coach who just passed away after a bout with leukemia uh, and uh, had a family, a you know, wife and a young daughter. So definitely thoughts for them. Um, but, you know, when, when Coach Bowden would come in and you talked about, like, he's sitting there eating hamburger helper, um, you know, it's just one of those things that he had that ability to make everybody feel like he connected with them. Even at that age, I mean, he's got – at that point, he's probably in his early to mid-70s. Where you, yeah. Did you already feel like you – did you feel like you could connect with him even at that age? Man, listen, yeah. He was smooth. Every time he seen me, he called me Burns. Hey, Burns. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got some good kids up there. We're trying to bring a couple more down the next year, you know, make sure you talk to them. So uh, he, he knows his players. Even when I seen him years after he left, he still called me Burns. So uh, <laughs> Coach Bowden, is, uh, he's a great guy. He remembers his players. 
And it's the reason why you hear the majority of his former players speaking highly about him. You know what I mean? Um, and that was just one of the great things about him. He's a great, great human first, you know, before football right. coach. He's a great man. So how did you guys – that those your first year or two there, um, you know, it's kind of the, the slide is kind of continuing. You guys don't – can't really turn it around until Jimbo takes over. Um, right. And, you know, what – were you, as a young guy, having second thoughts about the decision you made, or did you did you always have confidence that, you know, at some point we're going to turn this around when, when Jimbo takes over? Right. So at first, I'm going to tell you at first, beginning, I came in at the end. My only problems I had was when I switched from DN to D tackle. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of switched to D tackle because the coaching style, Odell, and that's why I love him so much. He had a better coaching style, you know, versus the DN coach at the time, right. and it wasn't just in your face do this he showed you how to do it you know what I mean he just didn't tell you how to do it he actually showed you and broke it down so um I ended up moving to D tackle and that worked out great for me you know but um other than that man we came in with a strong group of guys um I mean we were all we all knew what we wanted to do and we all knew what we could do uh you got Bradham EJ I mean Jermaine Thomas you got uh there's so many guys I can't even name all yeah. of them right now you know what I mean but we had a solid group of kids and everybody wanted to come in and take over the team, you know what I mean? Win right, right. as freshmen, you know, of course we had seniors and all that, but we were coming to win. Like y'all been here, you know, this all this time you haven't got it changed up. It's going to start with us, you know? And our thing is we were freshmen when the freshmen came in behind us, they saw how we worked, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's how it kept building and kept building until we got to that point where, Hey, okay, these guys are pretty good. Um, of course the, co the coaching situation was, that was chaos. You know what I mean? That was, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I heard about it. It was wow. You know what I mean? Um, it was a lot of uh, people pulling for the power. You know what right. I mean? Everybody wanted to be that guy up on the, you know, mountain. But, you know, everybody knew it was Jimbo, but we had other people who still wanted to be that guy. You know what I mean? So um, that was one of the big problems. You know, everybody didn't see eye to eye. And that's one thing I commend Jimbo on when he became the head coach. He let everybody know for first day, like, don't play with me. I'm this is my team. You got a problem with it? You take your ass. You know how he talked. <laughs> yeah. Take your ass, whatever you want. You know what I mean? So that was his mentality. That's how we came in, and that's what we needed. Um, Florida State needs a coach like that because we all usually are guys coming from you know tougher backgrounds or whatever it may be. Um, it's a new world for us. We're we're Tallahassee was big city. I'm from the country, man. You know what I mean? We can yeah. go do this and go do that. Or, you know, girls around all that stuff. So. You need coaches that can reel players back in, you know, and um, laugh with them, joke with them, but also they know when it's time to laugh and joke and when it's time to get serious. Um, so I, that's one thing I do like about Norvell so far. I've seen him put some of those characteristics where it's his way or the highway, you know what I mean? And, and yeah, that's that's how it should be. Um, it's, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to put you on the spot, make you give too many details, but I, I want to fill in the, a couple of the blanks there for people who okay. weren't following the team closely at that time. But what happened was, so Jimbo is head coach in waiting. And so, and I'm, I'm explaining this for people listening, not, not for you right. ever, oh, yeah. but um, so Jimbo's a head coach in waiting, but there was another, you know, coach Amato's on the staff. He's got a title. There's other coaches on the staff who have relationship with coach Bowden and other, and, and even though Jimbo's a head coach in waiting, there's still questions about, is he definitely going to be the head coach or maybe somebody else? And is coach Bowden listening to some other guys on his staff? So there was some stuff going on behind the scenes that if you weren't paying close attention or if you weren't following the team, you might not have known about. And, and so that's what, you know, kind of you're talking about. And, and so Jimbo takes over though. One of the things that I really think is the, you know, I think Florida state fans have to hope the parallels to what is going on right now with coach Norvell and his staff is, you know, when, when they came, when, when that staff took over and, and coach Stoops came in with that defense, the 2009 defense had really struggled on the field, but, you guys turned it around like really quickly, like 2010 got to pretty good. And then 2011, 2012, you guys were one of the best defense in the country, maybe the best defense in the country in 2012. Right. What was the key to turning that around? Cause it was a lot of the same guys. Right. So man, coach, uh, he came in with a defensive scheme and defensive plan that was perfect for us. Um, most of the time coaches try to force uh, a player to play a certain type of way or a certain game plan. They want the whole team running behind it. But when coach came in, he, man, he let the D tackles have two ways goals, two way goals. Um, so even if we got beat by the guard, 
we still could go under and stay in that gap and make a play. Um, and the linebackers just knew everything was just the linebackers knew what we were doing. You know what I mean? Everything was on point. We played, we wouldn't go, you know, just have fun. And that was one of the things that really changed that defense. Everybody started having fun. The other coaches had so the traditional ways, you know what I mean? Right. Um, you know, old school, go out there and just knock heads off type things at practice. You know, sometimes you're going to skip over the fundamentals doing all that stuff. You know what I mean? And, man, when he came in, it just – it was like a breath of fresh air. You know what I mean? It, it fit all the players. He knew the players before he got there. So he fit and he adjusted the scheme to the players. Over the years, it changed up a little bit because his first year, I, I went crazy his first year. I had a great season his first yeah, year. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, that was my best season. And that's because they let us play, you know, they let us do things. Um, D tackles didn't necessarily have to hold up linemen for the linebackers. You know what I mean? Um, now that changed, of course, <laughs> next year. That changed, of course. But um, that's how it went, man. And we just got better and better and just kept building from there. But uh, it definitely was a lot of the attitude that they brought in. Um, no back talk from players. You know, do your job and next man up, you know. And we had some dogs on that team, too. So, you know, it, it just worked out perfect. It seems like, and I know you're not here as often as you used to be. You know, obviously, you're not here in the program. But it seems like, to me, one of the challenges for this staff, especially in a COVID year, but really any year, was you know you a lot of these players that came in under Jimbo or, or came in under Willie, now they get a new staff. And it just seemed like last year, everybody wasn't always on the same page. Um, yeah. But you, you, you guys bought in pretty quickly. You think it was because – I mean, why do you think that was? Why do you think it, it – because it seemed like it. Maybe I'm wrong, but it seemed like you guys kind of bought in really quickly. It was a team thing. It was a team effort. You know, uh, we had, like I say, you, Vince Williams. You know, we had cats like yeah. that. All of us were on the same page. We don't care who the coach is. We're yeah. going to go out there and we finna lay some wood. We're not finna get dogged out by nobody. We finna dog somebody else out. You know, we just brought that aggressive football mentality to it. Um, this social media – you know, I don't know if we had social media back in our day. That's probably what I, would be. <laughs> I was going to ask you about social media because that's what's interesting about the time you played because yeah. you came in right when, you know, Facebook was out there, but but it wasn't – it was mostly just college kids. It wasn't yeah. – didn't have people like me on Facebook. And Twitter didn't exist until the – towards the end of your career, but it wasn't that, that big of a deal. So yeah. you, you you were actually there when social media came around. Yeah. When you look uh, at it now, what, like what do you think? For me, what I believe is that, you know, players now aren't just getting love while they're on the field and out, you know, wherever they go. Um, they're getting all that love on social media, you know, so they grasp to it. I, I, I mean, I just know a lot of football players. A lot of football players come from rough backgrounds, you know what I mean? So when football players get love from somewhere, they usually grasp to it and hold on to it or try to, you know what I mean? So that's one of the big things with social media. Um, I didn't like none of the stuff where everybody, you know, getting on social media about the COVID stuff last year. That's some stuff that the leaders would have had, you know what I mean? And, yeah, yeah, and if it happened, it would have been one time and done. You know what I mean? Like it wouldn't have been kept going on because we would have went over to the player's house. You know what I'm saying? That's the type of team we were. Like we would have went like, hey, what's up, bro? Like we, we was all on the same page, man. We trying to do all this together, you know, blase, blase. We were just a team, man. Now. I would say in these last couple of years, which has been crazy, is that we'll have players that go to the NFL and do actually good. Um, but when they're at Florida State, they don't necessarily play the best. You know what I mean? So yeah. maybe players weren't in the best scheme at the time. And, you know, they're adjusting and, you know, getting there. But the talent's there. Um, the kids aren't just buying in. I, I, I saw the film with Odell practicing uh, last year with one of the D-linemen, and people were scolding him. You know what I mean? Um but that's a senior. I know with Odell, he's rough on the freshmen, the young guys. He's always, but those, those were my roughest years. You know what I mean? He's rough mm -hmm. on those guys. So by the time you're a senior, it's natural. You know it. You know what I mean? Um, that's just how it is. But I saw that, and that's kind of throwed me off a little bit because it's like, this is a senior. This is our problem. You know what I mean? Like, right. this is our problem. Um, Big Marv last year. I expect mm -hmm. to see more out of him. You know what I mean? doing too much on social media. Like, that's our problem. Like, bro, we play on the field. We don't play on social media. You know what I mean? And same to the other players, but they're going on. They're going to have a great careers in the NFL, whatever it may be. But Florida State is Florida State, you know, and the former players take it serious. You know what I mean? You can do great 
in the NFL or after. We don't care about that. That has nothing to do with us. That has something to do with you. But when you're in Florida State, that has something to do with us. You know what I mean? So it's great to see players that are team players and leaders coming back in and not just front runners talking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I watched film last year. It just, you know, I, if you're a football player, you're not just going to get punched in the mouth and lay down. And that's what was happening a lot of times these last couple of years. They were getting hit in the mouth and laying down. We got hit in the mouth and <laughs> we went back to the drawing board. We were like, well, hold up. Well, something's not right. We got to figure something out. That next year, got hit in the mouth a little less. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, after that, it just kept growing. It kept blowing, man. So I think with the right players in there and the right mentality, and it has to be a group thing. It can't just be one, two, three people. Because you might have one rebel and that can tear down the whole team. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody has to be together. And that's just the point of being a great teammate and being somebody who's great at team sports. It seems like, I mean, from what I hear, and again, I'm not in the program the way you were, but it seems like Coach Norvell has taken a pretty hard line stance and, and tried to find a, guy, a bunch of guys that, you know, are going to be on the same page and are going to play together the way you talked about. The, the question is whether or not the talent is, you know, where, where it needs to be, but but that's going to probably take some time. But when you watch games now, are you watching, do you, are you watching every Florida state game? Do you make a point to watch games? Like how do you, even when they're not doing great, how do you uh, handle that? I can't, I'm so into it. I can't watch it unless I want my whole day to be bad. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I, I love Florida. State. I love it. My girl will tell you if I watch the games and we're getting beat, my whole mood is gone for the whole day. I don't talk. You know what I mean? Cause I yeah. really take it serious, man. Like, and it's just, you know, it's just these past couple of years that haven't been good for my mental health. You know what I mean? So um, I, I I watch big games. I try to watch in the beginning of the season and just, mm, but it's rough, man. It's rough to see you get whooped like that. I, I'm not going to lie to you. I can't just, it's like I'm just sitting there letting them do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's tough, man. So you, uh, I wanted to talk about that move you made from defensive end to defensive tackle because, yeah. um, I mean, it was good for you in some ways, but but I also, I always wondered at the time if maybe it wasn't good for you because, you know, especially the NFL, you weren't a 310 pound defensive tackle. You Bingo. weren't a 320 pound defensive tackle. Did you yeah. ever, do you ever, do you ever, do you let yourself think back to, man, maybe I should have stayed at the end or, or I do is that it all, I do it all the time, man, because it's, it's going to be in the back of your mind. You know, when I got to the NFL and I started looking around and I started noticing, yeah, I was decent size in Florida State, but I'm like, man, I'm the smallest one in the room. You know what I mean? Um, I was, man, when I first got to Minnesota, I think I was 305. And they wanted us to cut weight. And I'm like, what? I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm going against 340, 350 guys. I'm like, huh? But um, I cut weight and I started dropping it. And, and it came to a point to where uh, I was smaller. Um, a lot of these guys were taller, but athletic, yeah. we were all the same. You know what I mean? Like, in the NFL, you have to go out in the preseason and get a sack a game. You know what I mean? You have to mm -hmm. wow somebody. I was a seven-round guy. You have to wow them to keep their attention and keep you, especially when you're going into your second year because you got this fresh bunch of rookies coming in. And, uh, hey, man, if, if they all are just right here neck and neck and or we drafted this guy and you, you know, hey, <laughs> free agent guy, seven-round guy is gone. You know what I mean? So uh, yeah. it's a rough business, man, and you learn a lot about it, man, going through it. Um, I was in Minnesota, and I, I'm glad we're talking. I was in Minnesota, and Amp McLeod was up there with me. You right, know, right. Uh, yeah. it was nose guard. It was me, him, and Sharif Floyd. We were the new D tackles. Um, we were at training camp in Minnesota. Um, I'll never forget our defensive end coach was Brandon Daly. Um we were up one morning and we, it was me and Al, we were going to get breakfast, but we saw Sharif coming back early. Um, and, you know, we was like, man, where you headed to bro? Blah, blah, blah. Zay. Sharif said, Oh, I'm going to watch film with coach. You know, he wanted me to come watch that some film. Um, well at the time, Al, he's a, you know, he's not a slow learner, but you know, some people you have to go through. So Ampy just asked the coach the other day, Hey coach, can I get some extra film in? Amp's the free agent guy though. Coach told him, uh, we don't really have any time, man. You're going to have to get what you can get in while you're at, you know what I mean, while you're at practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we seen Sharif going, to, it's like, yo, this right. is crazy. You know what I mean? And it's hard for you to win. Um, when I was in New York, that was the last team I was with. Me and one guy, he played at Auburn. Uh, we always we wanted to get field work, you know, work on, on the field after practice. You know, a lot of players do it everywhere. So we do it. Uh, we go to the meeting the next day, Tom Coughlin, the head coach. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, we can't have anybody getting extra work in on the field after the uh, after practice. Uh, we don't want anybody to get hurt or get in it. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm like, I'm a free agent already. I'm on a practice. I just got off a of practice guard and you tell me I can't practice after practice to get better, you know? Um, mm-hmm. And it's crazy because it showed when I first went to camp, I was on it. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Guys who played that next year in the league, like I was tossing them around. I was doing all kind of crazy stuff. But as the weeks go on, you don't work out like you were working out because they don't want you to use the field. Uh, it kind of diminishes and you lose, start losing techniques and everything like that. So you run into roadblocks and stuff like that in the league, man. And, it, and it's just hard to go through. Even when I was with the Bucks, Shiano loved me. <laughs> like Shiano, as soon as I got there, because I was just a hard worker, you know, that's the type of people he liked. Um, they were doing good. Even, you know, uh, I had some guys who were first string office linemen that were asking me, what are you doing on the practice squad? You know what I'm saying? Like you better than some of these cats that's playing. But Lovey Smith came in and Lovey Smith got rid of the half of the team for no reason. He just brought his guys in. And that's when I went to New York. So it's been a crazy ride. Uh, definitely to all the players out there who are borderline and they feel like, you know, they want to go. Don't down feel bad on yourself. You know what I mean? If you don't make it because you're good enough, but it's other people that's just as good. You know what I mean? And they yeah. may get the flip of the coin. You know what I'm saying? So it's crazy. It's rough, man. It's, it's football. You love it, man. But uh, how'd you, you know. like? How'd you like? How'd you like the arena league? Arena was crazy, man. So arena, I did arena. Uh, Derek Brooks is down in Tampa, and him and my agent at the time, Roosevelt Barnes, that was his old agent. Right, right. So that's how I ended up going down to Tampa, and uh, it was fun, man. I'm not gonna lie to you. We didn't get paid much money. Uh, yeah. You know, it wasn't all the glitz and glamour, but we had a good time. We had kids from all over the world, small schools, uh, big schools. And even when we went to play the other teams, like we just had a good time. We had fun. Yeah. And also it's more backyard football. So, you know, right, we got right. to get away with some crazy stuff. <laughs> but, yeah, <laughs> It was fun. It hurt, though. It definitely beats your body up playing on that turf. Uh, I, now that I will say that, but it was definitely a good time. I bet. Well, I want to go back then, reverse a little bit back to, to 2011, 2012, when you guys really got it rolling. Because um, – those are the teams that really set the foundation for FSU to win the national title in 2013 and go on that run where they won 29 straight games, which actually started when you were still playing. Uh, the 2011 team, I mean, well, really both those years, that defensive line, that defense, what was it like playing on that defense and particularly the defensive line? Uh, it was Bjorn and Tank and I mean, you guys were loaded up front. Hey, it was a race to the quarterback. <laughs> it was a race to the quarterback, man. And playing with those guys, you know, it was so crazy because they were, wow, they just did their thing, you know what I mean? But we held down the middle and let them do their thing because we knew what they were possible, you know, what they're capable of doing. Um, we had a great time, man. And then when Tim came in, that was like, yeah, you know what I mean? We got some <laughs> you got some help inside for sure. So uh I mean he came in fresh me your flipping cats. So yeah, I mean I was like, oh, this is perfect. I'm not gonna get double teamed no more. Man, I'm still getting double teamed. I'm like, ah, you got me on the one side, you got tank, you got Brandon Jenkins, you got I'm like, how am I still getting double teamed? But <laughs> that's a good thing, you know what I mean? Uh it was crazy, man. But our defense was definitely like that. And then we had the linebackers to go along with it. So it was a race to make plays. Everybody wanted to make plays. We were competitive. You know, we motivated each other. We talked, you know what I mean? Like, we were on top of each other. Like, come on, bro, we can't, you know what I'm saying? Nobody was sensitive. You had a couple people that were sensitive, but they got over it, you know what I mean? But we worked together. You guys did in that 11 season when you guys lost the Oklahoma Clemson and then went up to Wake and lost to Wake. I remember yeah. after that game, um, and, you know, you guys went through a lot. EJ got hurt, and you guys had a lot going on, but when you lost the weight game, um, I remember after the game watching, I was out by the locker room and like a bunch of, you know, a bunch of the players were really taking it hard and, and really frustrated because you guys came to that season of big expectations. And now you've lost, you lost Oklahoma in a clo- real close game and then lost a real close game to Clemson and then lost a weight. Yeah. But then after that, you guys finished the second half of the season. Like it could have gone the wrong way. Why mm-hmm. did it not? How did you guys, cause that really, you guys, you know, were dominated pretty much the rest of that season and then yeah. set, you know, kind of went into 2012 to have another big season. What, how did you guys, what was it like at that point? Cause that had to be as low as, you know, you could be. Yeah. After that. 
so I think the coaches started to once again adjust to their players. You know, uh, don't put players in situations that you know they're not the best in when they're going against somebody who is the best <laughs> in that kind of situation. So um, that was a huge thing about it, man. And we just started putting work in. We got the mindset and we just got down and sat together and started talking. Jimbo had the leadership group and uh, we really got on guys, man, because he started making us get up to run with them. You know, if they miss class, or whatever, we had to get up at six o'clock with them. And, you know, you got a group of seniors like us and you're a freshman and you playing around, you know, that's, that's going to be rough on you. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, we just locked in, man. Uh, that, that was the biggest thing, locking in. The coaches sat back and seen what we were doing wrong, what our problems were. We fixed it. We made it more simpler for the players. And uh, it, it worked to the benefit, man. But that's a huge thing, coaches being able to adjust to their players, and especially different times of the season. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you got to have those coaches to help you along that way. What, what, uh, so what was it like watching the 2013 team? Um, because, you know, I mean, you play with those guys, you kind of help turn around the program to set that up. Um, I imagine it must have felt like a big brother or like a, almost like a dad or something. Yeah. So uh, that year was great. For me, um, let me tell you something. Teams in the NFL, I don't know what it is, but everybody hates Florida State. Uh, <laughs> everybody. I was able to, hey, if we play Florida State, just, okay, they wanted to, you know, bet or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Everybody just wanted to go at Florida State next. So that was a great year for us, man, and I felt really great. <laughs> I like, kind of felt sick to my, I was sick like my was, stomach a little bit. <laughs> sounds like it was a good year for your pocket. Yes, sir. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> NFL locker room, everybody has those big egos going around and right. everybody feels like their team is, you know what I mean? But after a while, they stopped betting because they knew, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, but man, it was a great year. So uh, we had a good time that year watching them. Uh, but man, I was so I was kind of sick to my stomach because that was the same team that we lost with right. the year before, you know, basically other than quarterback situation. But yeah. We still could have won. You know, uh, you go back and look at that NC State game. That's a drop pass. You know what I mean? Uh, you, you look back at that game, that, that NC State game. There's probably 10 plays that like, I mean, the play, their last touchdown drive, I think, is the one where Zay, Xavier Rhodes is going to pick off the pass and somebody else to flex it. Like it was just so many things that could have gone. If one little thing happens. Yeah. I mean, you guys, win, you guys win that game. And I think if you guys win that game, you guys kill Florida. You know, playing for the national title. Because Florida, I mean, that was – I mean, if you got you guys – I mean, I love EJ, but, I mean, he had a tough day and the offense had a tough day. But that's yeah. a game I think you guys probably – you guys would be undefeated at that point and probably roll over them, right? 100%. I, I, I truly believe that, man, because they had no business beating us. <laughs> like, honestly – I, I think they beat us because, I mean, you can really go back. I still remember plays and maybe because somebody went in the wrong gap, you know, the guard, you know, linebacker may allow the guard get up and chip block them and get over. You know what I mean? So, man, it really and there's like down. six. I think it was like six turnovers or something. I mean, the offense just kept yeah. hitting the ball. Yeah, that 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 was yeah, that was the case for that, man. You know, defense can only do so much, but uh we were definitely, man, we didn't want to lose. <laughs> defense did not want to lose. But, yeah, no, nah, that was crazy, man. And like I said, that was basically the same team. So, yeah, I definitely would have loved to have a national championship ring on my finger, man. But I, I'm glad those boys came back in that next year and saw the mistakes that we made. And, and even that they made, some of the younger players made, they came back that next year, they didn't make those same mistakes. You know what I mean? So, yeah, uh, yeah it was beautiful to see, though. So when you um when you when you've seen what Florida State's gone through the last few years, like I said, you know, and you said you probably don't watch them as much as you would like to when you when you yeah. think things aren't going to go well. But but what have you seen from Coach Norvell? It sounds like you you believe in Coach Norvell. Why why do you believe in? What have you seen that makes you think uh, they're on the right track now? Because you can you can tell the players are more of a unit. You know, you may have stuff that goes wrong now, but like you said, we still have players from the old. Coaches still out there, but you can see these young cats coming in. They're, huh? They're coming to bring that, you know, the thump. Like they're not just out there. Like you, it's a difference between them. You like the other guys less aggressive. These guys are more aggressive. You know, um, we saw the running backs. That was early in the season. That was huge. Uh, I think one of the biggest things for Florida State is our O line, and that's been the case for a while. And it's hard to get O line in there, man. But um, I think that Norvell coaches them great. Uh, he stays on top of his players. Even when stuff gets to the media, he handles it well. You know what I mean? He doesn't 
go crazy or whatever it may be that he could do. He handles it well. He takes it back to the locker room and gets it fixed. Um, the players that are coming in now, everybody's liking them. Uh, the hype is starting to get back around it. And I know we had this every year. It's hype built up, hype built up. We yeah. felt like we, you know, and it just crashes down. I think that's what mostly got me uh, over the years. Yeah, that's mostly what hurt me about the situation. But um, I think the players are coming around and I see social media. These guys are actually friends. You know what I mean? They're not just teammates. They want to be around each other. They're, you know, working out together. They're putting extra work in. So I think Novell's getting them in the right direction and just putting that pressure on. You have to apply pressure on them at, at this point. You know, if you come to Florida State, you know what's going on. You, you're part of the resume, like to get us back to where we're going to be. Like you can be a part of something great or you can go to Alabama where they already got it built. At. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so that's 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 what I think, man. But I, I, I like what Novell's doing. And I think we can get back to where we need to be. So being a South Carolina guy, man, and, and uh, last football question, I'm going to move on to the music. But but uh, yeah. with what Clemson's doing, dude, how, how tough is it? How tough is it up there? How, you know, wh wh what do you, yeah. do you just keep your mouth shut or, or what do you, what do you, how do you handle it? At this point, man, <laughs> I, I, I try to keep my mouth shut, honestly. Just keep it moving. I'm in the group chats. My family, they're all Clemson members. Uh, it's, hey, man, I'm getting plumb. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, they treat me like nobody now, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I just sit back, you know what I mean? Uh, I talk my junk, you know, I feel good at the beginning of the season. It's hyped up. I talk my junk. But, man, after the season, get rolling these past couple of years, it's just like, man, you know what? It's not even fun to talk football for me anymore, you know what I mean? That's mostly what I did on social media was talk football. But I don't want to talk about losing football, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I want to talk about us winning and beating folks, you know? So did you did you ever think about going into coaching at all? Or and I wanted to ask you right. how, why you decided to go into music and, and it was coaching right. something that you ever really considered before that? Right. So for me, I've played football since I was seven years old. Um, and I played football till I was what, uh, 27, I think, with Arena. Um, for me, I just kind of felt like I needed a little breakaway. You know, I've been into football for so long, the, you know, the busy schedules, the uh I always been busy, not being able to do other stuff in life. You know, I, I'm I'm a football player, but I've always been talented. You know, um, and I was just so good at football that nobody else, ever, you know, saw those talents because I focused and keyed in on that my whole time. But uh, with music, I just kept going to the studio of, over the years. Uh, after I got cut from the Giants, I started going and I hurt myself, and I just started building on that and just uh, just kept building. I like to make music. I like to write it. I like you know every part about it. So. Um, that's one of the reasons I chose to do music. You know, uh, I've always had a passion for it. I probably was writing in elementary, you know what I mean? Just jotting in my books or whatever it may be. Uh, and uh, it's good to be here. I've, I've dropped three songs right now. Um, all of them have got good feedback. All of them are like, this is your first song. And I'm like, yeah, this is my first three songs type of thing. So I'm just trying to keep the momentum rolling and going and uh, go from there. What's it like um, and, and yeah, you know, so the first I think the when was the first song you put out? Was it was like Campers. in the fall? What was yeah, that, that was in the fall of the last year. Yes, sir. That was Campers. Yes, sir. So what's it like, man? It's gotta be hard as an as an artist. I mean, as a football player, like, you know, you if you get beat on a play, you can go like take it out on the guy you're lined up against, or if somebody criticizes you or whatever. But with this, right. you put out your work and then you just yeah. gotta hear what people have to say, or are you yeah, how it how is that? Putting yourself out there. Like, <laughs> It's funny, man, because um, I've been doing, I've been learning so much about the business and I'm learning now that a lot of people that have been in music for years don't know a lot about the business side. But me, I'm always, I've always wanted to know the business side of anything, especially if I'm putting my time and effort into it. So um, right now, my first song was Capers. And when I put that out, it's, uh, I use auto-tune on it. So yeah. I got mixed reviews. Um, you know, a lot of people liked it. More my rap, my age, you know, they liked it, but uh, people a little older, uh, it wasn't their vibe, you know, feeling so you kind of like, okay, maybe this song I should go on another route, but not necessarily because you still have people that like it. Everybody's not gonna like everybody's music, you know what I mean? Yeah, and that's one of the things that I had to remember and uh, focus on. So I've been just taking all the feedback in positively and applying it to my new work, you know, and uh, I have an EP coming out soon. I have a song coming out on the 2nd of July, but that's me going back and listening to what people say uh, about my past music and some of the improvements that I can make 
and going back into making those improvements. Whether it may be taking this line out, it's not good enough. You know, replacing it with another line or switching up the whole hook or whatever it may be. Um, I just went back in and dug in because I've been doing everything by myself. You know, uh, I don't have a guy who's helping me do music. You know what I mean? I don't yeah, have yeah. a music coach or anything. I have people that I met on social media through hashtags. It's crazy because social media is powerful. But on Instagram, I use a lot of hashtags. I, I basically just dug in and learned as much as I possibly can about the business and how to release it to how to make it, uh, buying beats, everything. It's, it's You wouldn't believe how much it is, but people say the music business is, is what it is for a reason because a lot of people don't want to read all the paperwork, but I read. Right. So, uh, yeah, yeah, but it's, it's been interesting for sure. But it's cool. I mean, uh, one thing that, I mean, I think it it's probably comes from your athletic background and just the kind of person you are, but like the songs you, you've released, it's not like they're, I don't know, man, like sometimes people put out music, but it's like not really done. Like it's, yeah. they might've done like, oh, I've got a hook or I've got part of it or whatever, but like your songs, yeah. when you put them out, you've only put out three songs, but it seems like yeah. you've really, put a lot of time and a lot of effort into kind of making sure it was exactly the way you wanted it before you put it out. Yes, sir. Definitely. Yeah. Man. And, uh, you can go ahead. I was going to say, is that, is that, what's that process like for you? And do you think it is because of kind of your competitive nature? Competitive nature? Definitely. Uh, I know before I want to put something out, man, I, I'm a tough critic myself. So I always want to put something out that's, good you know what I mean uh, of mm -hmm. course you have good great better than that but my basis when I first made my first song and I put something out I needed to be good enough mm -hmm. to you know not get the criticism that could come <laughs> along with it now I have songs in my computer that I recorded years ago a lot of people that's what people do they don't keep that music in they put it out too early mm -hmm. And when you put it out too early, people hear that and it's like, bro, are you serious? Stop, stop rapping. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Don't do it. And I went through that process with some family members because I, I let family hear my music first. You know, people that I know, friends, you know, and a lot of people were like, nah, nah, well, I'm competitive. <laughs> you tell me I can't do something, I'm going to keep on working on it and keep on crafting it. Like I said, it's been a long process, but I got to the point where I feel like I can put stuff that I, I know people are like, and you know, that I like myself to listen to. So um, it's a whole process to it, man. You have to make sure your product is done before you put it out. A lot of people don't do that, man. They just want to make music, but you gotta, it's tough getting people to actually click your music and listen to it. I can see my analytics from everywhere. And you know, they are you're going against a, a lot of people that already have names for themselves. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, but it's all about building the community and, just letting it keep growing, you know, and, that, and that's what I've been doing, um, being more active on social media. I'm not a social media guy at all. Uh, <laughs> if we talk about football, sports, yeah, you know what I mean? But I think I was off of it for a year and so because I'm, I'm old school kind of, you know, I'm like, mm -hmm. I didn't grow up on all this stuff. I'll be fine without my phone in my hand, you know what I'm saying? And that was a challenge that I was doing for myself. And it was, you know, it was pretty cool because you just don't get all the oh, I got this alert. This is going on here. This is there. You know what I mean? Like, dang, this happened again. So um, it really worked great for me, man. And I've just been locking in and just doing what I need to do, um, being more active on social media, being more networking and everything else, man, because it, it's something that comes along with the with the business. And then you even, you know, you, you got, I'm sure you don't have a huge budget, but you put together music yeah. videos that like, yes, you know, you can tell it's like a real story and they've been yeah. edited and all that. Um, are you getting feedback from former teammates or other people, you know, just seeing you in music videos? I and mean, that's pretty cool. Thanks. Definitely. Um, what was cool about my first video, first three videos, I shot with a guy um, in L.A. using hashtags. Once again, he was an upcoming guy. Um, man, I've had people try to charge me twenty four hundred uh, up to eight thousand dollars for a music right. video. And I found this guy. He was five hundred dollars, maybe. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that fit my budget more. And we were kind of working together and just grinding and, you know, building something. And it's been great because he's got a lot of uh, more people coming his way because I sponsor all my stuff like I do ads, um, trying to target, you know, certain fans of music and everything like that. But I have got hit up by a couple of guys that I played ball with. Uh, it's been crazy because a lot of people are scattered out and, you know, people separate and go their own ways. Um, but I still have my solid group. Most of the guys who I talk to is either they play D tackle or they came in my class. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. That's mostly my, you know, former player network. Of course, when I see everybody, it's all love, you know, mm-hmm. dap each other up and everything like that, you know, start talking about the old days. But uh, so far, everybody's liked it. You know, I've gotten a lot of good feedback. Um, people didn't know I could do it. You know what I mean? And that's the yeah. biggest thing. I never put myself out as making music. It was always football for me. I was always locked in on football. So um, it's, it's been surprised, man. Surprising a lot of feedback I'm getting, a lot of people that like the music. So it's been motivating me to, you know, keep going and keep coming with it and just see how big I can grow. Because like I say, you know, I'm a competitor at the end of the day and I like to write. And uh, this is something I really want to do and I can make it happen. So uh, I'm definitely focused on it. When when, when do you uh, plan to have the EP out? And can you give us any like preview or uh, what, what, what it's going to be like? Different or similar to what you've done so far? Um, so the EP, I have the song Blazing releasing on the second, um, the EP, I would like to drop it on the second if I could, but, uh, it's getting mixed and mastered right now. So I'm not sure if I'll be able to beat the date, but if I can, I will. Um, I think it's going to be like a whole nother thing. Like when you hear it coming in, it's going to be like, oh, I wasn't expecting this, but this is dope. You know what I mean? This is a vibe. Um, we go through the whole process. The name of it is going to be No Love Lost. Uh, and that's kind of me um, just telling people, hey, no love loss. You know, I was here with you at the top, you know what I mean? And uh, we were together, we were, you know, all dope. People go on and move their certain ways, uh, you know, and it's been crazy. So um, even with football, no love loss, man. You know, it is what it is. This happened, that happened. I'm at where I'm at in life. Um, I'm still motivated, I'm still grinding you know, and it's no love loss. I'm going to keep doing my thing though. You know what I mean? And just keep grinding. So that's kind of uh, the basis behind the EP. And uh, you can kind of tell even on the end of the song, it just goes out and it's just talking about me processing and like elevating to a new level. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, it's only five songs, but okay. it's five quality songs. You know what I mean? And that's the route that I may take because people make these big albums and 20 songs on it now. I'm not listening for 20 songs. You know what I mean? We don't get through these first five or so, 10 maybe, but you know, so it's quick, it's fast to the point, and uh, it's a good vibe. You know, it's music for everybody. It's chill music. I have, uh, you know, if you just want to slow dance with your lady music, I got mm-hmm. a good one on there. Um, I got, you know, turned up music. You working out, you want to go to the jam. You know, I just got kicked back real like old school kind of hip hop um, music that's just the vibe. And that's why I try to mix in a little bit of new day with the old school vibe you know what i mean and that's what i kind of feel like that's going to be one of my advantages because i'm still original to me and who i am but i do like to have fun a little bit and turn up so we got the music to turn up with as well nice um so we'll put in the links at the bottom of the video but um on youtube but if you want to maybe give out some of your social media stuff and where people can find you i know the more subscribers you get on youtube the more the the, you can actually monetize it. They'll run ads and things like that. You can actually yeah. make some more yeah. money off it. So, so where can people find you? 100%. Yes, sir. I'm a one dog on YouTube. That's my channel. Click the subscribe button, comment, like, share, whatever it may be. I definitely appreciate it. Um, social media. I'm a one dog on most platforms. My music, a one dog on every streaming service. You can find it. Um, my website just went up. It's a one dog.com. I have merch and apparel on there. That's I worked on, getting for two years i was um, i was looking i was looking at the hats man i might have to get me yes, a hat i like that yes, one logo, buddy. hey thank you man i appreciate it i just <laughs> trademarked it so um I'm, I'm taking it serious man i'm definitely looking to do big things um i bought around 110 shirts um and i before i even put it on the website i sold i think i'm down to 40 so nice and it's not even been two weeks so uh, i have a lot of people support me back home and that's kind of why it makes sense for me to be, be back home with my music because I can do a lot of stuff here and I can have the perfect support system. And uh, it's going to be dope, man. My video is dropping on YouTube on the second as well to go along with the song Blazing. And you can kind of see the support that I get. Uh, we shot the music video in the rain. So I, I didn't mm-hmm. think people were going to pop up, but they still came out and supported. So um, man, it's a lot of support at home for me. So I'm just excited, man. That's awesome. And well, you had another blessing recently. You had your, your first child. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have every junior. So um, wow. definitely be on the radar, looking out for him, similar fans. And he has, he's big uh, already. Class, yeah. class of class of 20, 30, 39, maybe? 39, <laughs> definitely. Listen, yeah. I, I want him to stand up, though. We're not letting him play deep tackle. We're letting him play linebacker. Yeah. 
Look, my hands are all messed up, man. Nah, we're going to let him stand up. Uh, that'll be fine. But, yeah, he's a blessing, man. Uh, he's getting uh, used to us accommodating, and we're getting accommodated to him as well. Uh, sleep, of course, you know, that is what it is. Uh, you get it when you get it. But, man, it's been a blessing. We've been excited. And, uh, yeah. yeah, it's a true blessing, man. Well, congratulations. And uh, one thing I meant to mention earlier, one of the first times you really stood out, first of all, I mean, it, it was always good to interview you back when you were playing. You were always really good to deal with. Um, but one of the first times that we knew what you were going to be was when Jimbo took you to that ACC kickoff in 2010 when you were yeah. a sophomore. I mean, he just became head coach. You didn't even start the year before, and he mm -hmm. took you to ACC kickoff as kind of his representative on defense. That was a pretty big deal, man. How special was that to you? That was great, man. I, that was great. That was amazing, man. And I'll attest that back to Stoops again, man. They let us play. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, camp, I don't know if people look back at old film of me, you'll see me spinning. Uh, you'll see me hitting all kind of, you know, just being agile, finesse, and quick. Um, towards, it switched over to more of a deep tackle later on in my years, a run stopper. Um, that's that's what that was, man. And that DN playing DN helped me uh, at that weight. You know what I mean? I think I was maybe two eighty, and yeah. I was just it was hard to block me. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I was just coming with it. That's a test of stoops, and that's a test of planning around your players. You know what I mean? Game planning around your players. So um, they let us do our thing, man, and we went crazy that year. So it was it was definitely a good time. And to go to the ACC championship at first, I was like, eh. I, mean, I was surprised. Because we had other seniors. I was a redshirt sophomore. We had seniors on the team and everything, but that but was I think, Jimbo. I think it spoke to the fact that you you bought in and you were you were yeah. a leader, even though you were only a sophomore. And yes, he sir. would talk about you don't have to be a senior to be a leader. You could be a sophomore and be a leader. And yeah. I think that's what that was about as much as anything. Right? Yeah, definitely. 100%. That's what that was, man. Uh, and it was a great feeling. Like I said, I, I always went out and worked hard. I didn't skip anything. I always put work in just as much as anybody else. You know what I mean? So uh, that that just showed what I could do. And like I said, I told you earlier that 2010 year was a great year for me. So, um, man, that was a blessing. I think I, I broke my thumb. Uh, yeah, Boston late in College. the year. Yeah. But you, broke my thumb. But you, but you didn't miss any time, though, right? You kept playing. We had an off week the next week. Um, but I wasn't in shape. Uh, we we had an off week, so I was I took that week off and came back against NC State. And that's when we played uh, Russell Wilson, and he was still there. Yeah, it wasn't a, it wasn't a good game because <laughs> you know he was running everywhere. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's like, coach, come on! <laughs> I just broke my <laughs> finger. You know, you know what I mean? Um, and actually, I lost my starting job after after that game, but I had to get my strength back in my left hand. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. um, after that, man, it, it was just a great time. It was a great season. Uh, it, it was a blessing, man, to be able to do all of that stuff. And, you know, it's for the state at the end of the day. And I always have to remind people, like, hey, man, you got a lot of stuff going on. But, man, listen, Florida State, we did that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you can't you, – you can't – down talk anything you know what I mean like let's go look at the stats let's look at the, you know whatever it may be man name holds weight uh we brought back uh we brought back you know Florida State that's what we wanted to do we didn't win the championship but we won that next year and that was so good to see you know what I mean um and I do believe we'll be back soon uh it's just getting the players we just got to steal some players from Alabama <laughs> that's all <laughs> Yeah, so the portal. It. Now they got the portal, so maybe it'll work out. But, but um, man, I'll say it because uh, I know you. You sounds like you still have some things you wish you guys could have accomplished. But, but again, man, anybody can come in during the middle of a run. Like anybody can come in in the middle of a dynasty run and just kind of ride that wave. But to come in when you guys came in, when it was going downhill and then turn it around and turn it back up, is really awesome. And man, individually, your career started forty-one games at Florida State. Um, yeah. I mean, that's crazy. So you, you right. definitely should have a lot of pride in what you did at Florida State, man. I appreciate it. And good luck with the music. And I'll be listening. I, I actually don't mind the auto-tune. So don't listen to everybody <laughs> else. I, I didn't mind the auto-tune. Uh, hey, I like man, song. thank you. Well, that's good. And it's not bad, man. People are just weird when it comes to new stuff yeah. and everything, man. So, you know, that's all. But I do have some stuff. I got a lot of stuff with no auto-tune on this song. So, yeah, yeah just make sure y'all tap in, subscribe, and just get ready for the second. <laughs> All right, thanks, everyone. We'll we'll have you back on, man, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, when you hit it big, you'll you'll remember us back in Tallahassee, man. I enjoyed talking to you, and yes, uh, hopefully, we'll talk to you again soon. Okay. All right, Ira, take it easy, man. Thanks for reaching take out. It.